So the basic rule of transposition, what we do to one side of an equation, we do to the other side to keep the balance. If you remember this equation we looked at last time, a plus b equals c. If we want to find b on its own, we have to minus a off both sides of the equation. So a minus a cancels out and we're left with b equals c minus a. I just want to have a look at what's happened to, um, to the value of a. So if I just clean this off again, just let me write that down as it was before. a plus b equals c. Look what's happened to the a. We've still got the same amount of material, if you like, in this equation. We've still got a, b and c. We've just rearranged it to find b, to make b the subject. But look what's happened to the a. It started out its life on this side of the equal sign and has finished off on this side. It's gone from the left to the right. And in doing so, look what's happened to its value. Here, it's a positive value, whereas now it's become a negative value. So this is the second rule, if, I suppose, if you like, of transposition, that when we move something across the equal sign, it becomes the opposite value to what it was before. So if it was a positive on the left hand side and we move it across, it becomes a negative. As in this case here, plus a became minus a, the positive became the negative. And it's the same rule for every value. If you have a negative on one side and you move it across, it becomes a positive. And the same with multiplication and division. If you have a times on this side, it becomes a divide when it crosses over. And the same is if it's a division then, when you cross it over, it becomes a multiplication, whichever way you do it. Whichever way it goes, it changes its value. So when we move something across the equal sign, it becomes the opposite value of what it was before. Let's just do that as another example. A plus B minus C equals D. We want to make C the subject of the equation, but it's a negative. We don't want to end up with a negative number as our subject or a value. We want that to be a positive. So the first thing we've got to do is make that a positive C. So from the rule that I've just shown, we could add c to both sides of the equation in order to get a positive c, like we looked at in the last video. But let's just use the rule we've looked at now. Let's just move the negative c across the equation, and in doing so, it becomes a positive c. So now we have a plus b equals d plus c. We want to get C on its own so we can revert back to our other rule of doing the same to both sides. We want to minus D off both sides in order to get rid of that. Well, it's the same, isn't it? We're crossing the D over the equal sign and making it a minus D. So we can just rub that off. It's travelled across. It's become a minus. Let's put the subject on the left-hand side. So C equals A plus B minus D. VP over VS equals NP over NS. If we want to get NP on its own, let's make the NS a multiplication over there. Now if you look at the way we did it on the last one, I think we looked for NP and it came out as VP times NS divided by VS. What's happened? We've moved ns across the equal sign and it's become a multiplication. If you like, we've crossed up like this. So this is another bit of a shortcut where you've got simple fractions each side of the equal sign. You could imagine little cross arrows. That's the route that the values take when you're crossing them over. So the division becomes a multiplication and vice versa. So if we want, uh, let's say for example, 
VP on its own, we can move VS across there quite quickly and get VS equals NP, sorry, VP equals NP times VS divided by NS. This was to get VP on its own. We've taken the VS, it's a division, it's become a multiplication. Now you might need to watch that a couple of times in order to get that principle. But perhaps to show it with numbers, just to summarize this now, uh, let's have a think. Three times four is 12, which is the same as six times two. So here we have multiplications each side. Let's say we want to get three on its own. Well, we know that we can divide both sides by, uh, sorry, divide both sides by four to get rid of the four. So we get three on its own. Three equals six times two, which is 12 divided by four. What have we done to the four? It was a multiplication there. It's crossed over and it's become a division on that side. And that's the same rule for um, any value. When it moves across the equal sign, it becomes the opposite value. I would like to just spend a little bit of time looking at squares and square roots now. In electrical science, we tend to be using triangles and trigonometry quite a little bit. So my students are very familiar with seeing triangles and groaning at me every time they see one. So we have an angle there, we have a right angle there. Let's just use some values to start with. That's, this is a, the standard three, four, five triangle. What do I mean by that? Well, if this value is three, but whatever, three centimeters, three meters, anything, and that side is four, then this side is gonna come out as five. How do we know? Pythagoras's rule, which many of you will already know, this um, line here is called the hypotenuse and Pythagoras' theorem says that the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So if I was to write that down, that would be five, we would have three squared plus four squared equals five squared. Three squared is nine, 3 times 3. When a number is squared, it just means multiplied by itself. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 and 9 are 25, which is 5 times 5. So I'll just rewrite that out now. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Now, this is where I'm looking at the rule of transposition when it comes to squares. So, um, the opposite of a number squared, 5 times 5, uh, would be the square root of the answer. 5 times 5 is 25. So, 5 on its own is the square root of 25 square root of 25, what two numbers make 25? 5 times 5. So, the opposite of a number squared is to square root that number. So in order to get 5 on its own here, I would need to square root it. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I must square root that side as well. The, squ the squared sign and the square root sign cancel each other out now. So I'm left with 5 is the square root of 9 plus 16, 3 squared plus 4 squared. 5 is the square root of, so that 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, the square root of 25 equals Five. It's like moving the sign across the equals, so it's like um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I move the squared sign across the equals sign, it becomes a square root. 
because it's the opposite. The opposite of a number squared is the square root. So that is just the same as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is the square root of a squared plus b squared.